Hello, hello, hello. It's good to see you. Hi, friends. I'm glad you're I'm glad to be here today. After taking a week off, I was celebrating my 20th anniversary. And my nice husband took me to a COVID-friendly weekend getaway. It was really nice. Nice to have a change of scenery. Really nice to have a change of scenery. <laughs> When you, when you live at home. Oh, hi, Rita. How you doing? I'm glad you're here today. So uh, because of an email that I got from a voice teacher recently, a voice teacher in New York, uh, we are going to talk about how to pick songs for our teenage students today. Oh, Rita's, Rita's wishing me a happy anniversary. Thank you, Rita. Um, so... <laughs> We're going to talk about songs for our teenage students today. Uh, we know our younger singers like pop repertoire. They're just like we were, right? They fall in love with artists they hear, that they hear whose music reflects their feelings to them. They feel certain songs very deeply, and they want to sing those songs. I mean, what is it? Uh, the cell phone, right? Is that the name of it? Is that the name of Rita? That really struck a chord with a lot of kids. They really got that. It really spoke to them. Well, we want to help them with that because we love them. Um, but we can also feel a bit reticent for any number of reasons. So I've been chewing on that again. I talked about this I don't know, long time ago, a year ago, maybe Rita, Rita was here for that too. There are certain factors we need to keep in mind when we're guiding, oh, driver's license. Thank you. <laughs> it was a, I'm like, ID card. What was, what was the name of that thing? Yeah, driver's license. Yeah, they love that song, right? And it's a good song. I mean, it's not a great song, but it's a good song. So yeah, so I've been chewing on facts. There are certain factors we have to keep in mind when we're guiding our young singers. Like, uh, what do you do when a 14-year-old brings you a song that has swearing in it or a sexually explicit video? I mean, we may not give a rip. I don't give a rip. Uh, but the parents usually are paying for paying us and they probably do give a rip. Um, so, or what about the student who's in love with Louis Capaldi? I mean, that guy who seems to be able to do this scratchy, growly thing really high in his range. And you know that even if you could teach your student to make that sound in a healthy way, it's really unlikely that that student is <laughs> going to be able to sing in that range. You know, he's... Louis Capaldi has an incredible range. So what is a voice teacher to do? I so appreciate that you told me the name of that song, Rita. On one hand, teens seem like really easy clients. I mean, they're not paying out of their own pockets. Uh, they make, they have time or they make time for extracurricular activities. They have very little sense of consumer advocacy. <laughs> so... So they tend to just go with your program, whatever your program is. Uh, and they're also a little more complicated because they look to you for a lot in a way your adult students really don't. And you are aware of that. You want to help them develop their voices, develop their artistry. You want them to find the musical gifts that they want to share with the world or that they just want to enhance their own life experience. You have to teach them about vocal health. You have to help them develop habits that will help them stay healthy, right? Let them have that responsive voice that gives them joy for the rest of their lives. And that's why picking popular songs, you know, I mean popular, anything that's sung into a microphone, it can be a little bit scary for some people. So, whoops. <laughs> uh, sorry. I am Meredith Colby, and I support voice teachers to create confident teaching of popular styles. I'm also the author of Money Notes, How to Sing High, Loud, Healthy, and Forever, which is behind me, and my lizard is sitting on top of it. Uh, it introduces NeuroVocal Method, a way to use brain science to teach healthy techniques for people who sing into microphones or who want to. Uh, today, I have... so. 
say hi, add to the chat. I have a good freebie today. You probably also have already seen the trigger word in the comments, but my freebie today is a download of the pop rock rep list. Uh, it includes songs, the artists who sang the song, the style, the range, and comments by me. Like, you can leave out the low note on this one, stuff like that. <laughs> it also includes a few helpful websites, student engagement and performance ideas, and a suggestion for how you can create your own tool for your own little studio. I didn't mean to say little. For your own fabulous studio and uh, with almost zero time investment. I think you'll be able to use this with uh, many of your microphone students. So put teen in the comments and the NeuroVocal bot will send you to that page where you can sign up for free. If you're already on my mailing list, you got an invitation for this free download this morning in your inbox. So you don't have to sign up again. Anyway, so I also wanted to let you know that the doors are open for my NeuroVocal Method certification class that I'm running this summer starting June 11. So I would love to have you join me in that class. Join us. There are already people signing up, which I'm very excited about. And uh, we're just finishing up one now. And we're going to start another one on June 11th. That will be the second and final opportunity for this year, 2021. So I hope you'll join us. Wendy is here. Wendy is in that class. She is in the current class. Did I do that? Oh, right. That's the trigger. Teen. Put teen in the comments. <laughs> and I ha look at, I had all these nice slides and then I didn't put them in there. So there's the one for the class. Honestly, can't get good help anymore. There, I hope you'll share your thoughts and your comments with me today. If something gives you a takeaway, put hashtag that, that, that in the comments. Hearts and thumbs are always appreciated because Facebook, I don't know, it's, a, it's an algorithm thing. I don't even know what an algorithm is, but I know it likes me better when you guys put hearts and thumbs in the chats. So, oh, Leanne's here. Hi, Leanne. Good to see you. Caitlin is here. Hi, Caitlin. And of course, um, wait, what do we type to get, wait, somebody's saying, what do we type to get the sign up? Okay, Caitlin asked the question, that I left out. And there it is. Teen. <laughs> so there we go. Really, like I spend time making these nice things and then I don't even put them up. Which, I'll bet you feel that. I bet you do that in your own studio sometimes. So, uh, that's the class. That The trigger was teen. This is the hashtag that. If you get a takeaway from me or somebody else. If somebody else puts something cool and signed up. Oh, look at this. Marlis. Marlis is signed up for the summer class. Yay, Marlis. Can't wait. That's going to be great. I'm glad you're signed up. So here we are. Whoop, oh, Leanne's here. S Simona is here. Hello, Simona. Okay. So teens, we love them. We love them. They are magical. Their voices are changing, which can be frustrating to them. They count on you to be reassuring and encouraging to them. Do, during this time in their lives. And of course, we do want to use our relationships, our special relationships with our teenage students to expose the teen or tween student to types of music that they may not have found on their own, right? So not driver's license. Classical, jazz, blues, folk, Motown, you know, these genres are not necessarily the type of music that a kid's just gonna happen upon. Um, but having been introduced to them by you, they may find they have an affinity to one or more of these styles. They may excel in one of these unfamiliar styles. I have a kid who's 16 and is all over retro stuff. She wants to do Etta James and, and like old Carole King. Go figure, I don't know. They may have the thing, the magic that makes a singer of this particular type of music really shine. So we don't want to allow them to be completely comfortable. I, in, this is my opinion, 
my opinion, um, by letting them always sing only what they already know. And we also sometimes feel reticent or reluctant teaching them styles that we don't feel super confident about or, or styles that we just don't like very much. I'm like, okay, here we go. Shout out to Rita. Like you may have feelings about Billie Eilish, for instance. So when I talked about this last time, I talked about Billie because she's, and she's still huge. She's still a thing. People are, your your teen students are bringing her into your studio. I know that. Well, not her, but her music. So anyway, so we will often give them things that we know how to teach, that we're comfortable teaching. And that's not bad, right? Because you are confident teaching them. You know you won't mess your student up. You're very familiar with the genre or even the piece. But if you only give them music that they are unfamiliar with, um, or you only give them classical music, then you really are not acknowledging them as individuals. And again, my opinion, but these are we're, we're artists we are teaching artists and artists need to be acknowledged as individuals again my opinion they need us to see them <laughs> thank you marlis thank you rita um so they need us to see them as individuals i think we have to let them sing the stuff they love and that we can teach them I believe we can do, teach them to do that in a healthy way and a satisfying way. So some of the voice teachers in the neurovocal method class that I'm currently running have been using their new brain training techniques on their teen students. Actually, Wendy is here and she has been. She's been having a great time. They've been having a great time with it. I mean, it's so fun to share successes with your students, right? It's so fun. So with, enga- with teenage voices, there are developmental things we have to consider when guiding them to pick out songs. So you may or may not know about this, but our vocal folds have hormonal receptors in them. And that is partly what has to do with changes in our changes of life, hormonally, like adolescence, for instance. And they respond to this increased hormonal production during adolescence. Um, oh wait, we have a comment. I want to pull up this comment. And this is Wendy who is saying, oops, who is saying they're going to sing it anyway. Right? <laughs> Thank you, Wendy. They're going to sing it anyway. So we might as well help, to help them learn how to sing it in a healthy way. Well said. So here they are. They have this increased hormonal production. They have these receptors on their vocal folds. One of the ways that this presents in kids, um, the kids who are on their way to being baritones, low voices, for instance, is that is the voice's inability to modulate registers with fluidity. So that's that, you know, yodely thing that they have. One of the really common ways it presents in kids that are on their way to being higher voices is a mild edema, which can affect high notes and tonal qualities. And I put in my comments, should you rant here, Meredith? But yes, <laughs> I'm gonna rant just for a second. Like I want every choir, middle school choir teacher to tell their students this, particularly their cis female students this, that that fuzzy sound that they get sort of between ages 10 and 13 is normal. It is natural. There is nothing wrong with them. I've had kids who come and they're like, my voice, I hate my voice and it doesn't do what I want. And I used to be able to do this and now I can't, but it's that it's, it's, it's what's happening hormonally and it will clear up. It'll be all better when they're 14 or 15. Please reassure your students that, you know, because, because, because. We hate when they're sad about that. And also they, they will be apt to make decisions about their singing that will affect their entire lives based on how they feel when they're 12. Ah, okay. There I ranted. Done ranting. No. So there's that to consider. (sighs) Their developmental stage 
how to enrich their lives with exposure to other kinds of music and teaching them about vocal health. And then on top of this, we're also encouraging them as young artists to express themselves. We have a comment from Ilaria who says, Ilaria says, I try to get them into the classics as well. One rule I have is you cannot sing this, you don't, you cannot sing things you don't know, right? Or songs with foul language when they're too young, right? Right. Well, yeah. It's, songs with foul language are, it's just, it's just dangerous. <laughs> and you know what? They're used to protecting themselves from grownups, right? <laughs> so they won't be surprised when you say, no, no is wearing. Anyway. Okay. So, um, so vocal health, blah, 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 encouraging them to express themselves and to find their unique voice. And to that end, many of them want to sing popular music, which you want to encourage because you love them, but also, oh, okay. Sorry. I got confused. So don't forget about my freebie, freebie today, which you will get if you put teen in the comments, um, you will get an opportunity for that free download. So Ilaria just made a point that I'm just going to pull up real quick, which is this is a family show. <laughs> Their parents are paying for these lessons. So it has to be a family show. Even if the video of their song is, is racy, you can't do it. And, you know, I don't know how to help you with that except just, just say, gosh, I wish I could, but I can't. Or just to say, no, it's not going to happen. So like if they come in with a Halsey song that's just littered with F-bombs, you know, or you or they want to sing New Rules by Dua Lipa. You know that one? The one, the, you know, once, you know, pick up the phone. You know he's only calling because he's drunk and alone. Yeah, that's not going to fly. So you just have to say, hey, great song. Wish we could do it, but we can't. And, <laughs> and then maybe steer them towards something else, which my freebie will help you with today. Uh, the next thing to think about is the range of the song. As we all know, oh, oh well, I put that up there already. You know, the commercial music world right now, I think I'm going to take that out for now, just for now, because, because um, the commercial music world right now is all about higher and louder. And ever so occasionally, you're going to have a teen singer who actually can do that, but mostly not. So you can either teach them how to blend high while tempering their expectations a little bit based on their age. Um, you know, and, and remind them that the people that they love are all, pretty much all, like 10 to 30 years older than them. Or, you know, at least older than them, right? So, anyway, here it is. So there are options you have with these things. You can teach them to blend high if they're not too young, right? If they're 15 or 16, it's okay. You can start teaching them to blend high. Won't hurt them. Um, moving between registers with fluency and without apology. So in my class, we call it vocal camouflage, but you can do that. You can teach them how to do that, um, how to just keep their placement consistent so that they can go register to register and it will still feel big to them, but it doesn't sound big to the listener. You can dig into the qualities of the different registers the way pop singers do and create vocal texture and style like really fun. Now, if all of that seems foreign to you, then you are in good company. Very few of us are taught how to do those things or teach, uh, you know, or teach others how to do those things. And when I say very few, pretty much almost nobody <laughs> is taught how to do that. And that's why I teach the classes that I teach just saying. Um, and the last thing I'm going to touch on is the artist's approach. If your student, wait, did somebody say something about this earlier? I can't, no, it doesn't look like it. Okay. If your student is going to sing popular styles, it's imp really important to teach them how to listen uh, and how to copy the stylistic signatures of the artists that they love. Now, this does not mean that you are teaching them to be little mini-me's of their favorite artists. You, you are not. You are teaching them how to acquire stylistic vocabulary. 
This is everything in popular styles. Rita, if you want to comment on this, I'd love to hear it. Stylistic vocabulary is huge in popular styles. In fact, I may just do a broadcast on that in the future. Anyway, but speaking of, there is a fabulous blog site managed by Jess Baldwin called singinginpopularmusics.com. If you do not have that um, bookmarked, just do it. It's a great, it is a great resource. And thank you, Jess Baldwin, for doing that. So the amazing Kat Reinhardt just published a very excellent piece about this very issue that we're talking about today. So I will put the link in the comments afterward. It's a really good article. I think you guys are going to like it. Anyway, so the last thing is the artist's approach. And as I've mentioned, let's talk about the artist, Rita's favorite artist, who says, wait, I did ask Rita to comment and Rita says, I'm with you all the way here. Okay. And that's because about vocab acquiring stylistic vocabulary. Okay. Rita, it's very, uh, bleh, bleh. okay. Talk about the artists that our teen girls are into, Billie Eilish. Billie is not just a singer in the way that we have historically understood singers. I'm watching this, uh, um, what is it? National Geographic series about Aretha Franklin. And, you know, we're looking at the 60s and the 70s and the 80s, and she's so controlled, like her image, the way that she is pr put out there into the world by her record labels, even by herself, is very controlled. Like we saw what she wanted us to see. And that ain't what happens anymore. These artists are, they're, they put themselves out there. Billy is this whole artistic package, right? She represents something to these kids. Her, her lyrics and her clothing, her social media, her, her videos, you know, all, everything she does, she's really tapped into this zeitgeist, right? And young people love her. And, by, and you know, and the way she sings is, is the way she sings. It's very, it's very singer songwritery the way she sings crazy ranges, but you know, that's, <laughs> that's, that's that thing. Um, but what, what we can do with the Billie Eilish phenomenon or really, you know, anything like it is, is to devote a lesson to teaching the student, teach your student how to listen, because guess what? Nobody else is going to do this for them. Help them move closer to hearing what a singer is doing both as a vocal instrument and as a musician, right? You can say to your student, you know, one of the things you love about Billy is her style, right? And there's a lot to be said for copying the styles of singers you like so that you can learn, not so that you can be them. But ultimately, you're going to find and create your own style. So let's spend some lesson time today really listening to Billy. Let's, or, or, or whatever singer, I'm just saying Billy. And, and let's figure out what they're doing both as vocalists and as artists. So then you do that and you do that without judgment. You use your magical, fabulous, analytical voice teacher ears and you change their lives right there in that lesson because no other teacher is going to do this for them to take time to listen to the little nuances that make a singer compelling. Like when does she start her phrases with vocal fries, plosives or coordinated attacks? Um, when does she use a breathy tone? When does she use a test mix to communicate the strong emotion? Does she use register breaks? Is your teen in love with vocal embellishments? Great. Show them how to figure out the components of a, an embellishment. Even if it's just a three note embellishment, ha, your student isn't really hearing that as three notes or as a three note embellishment. They're just hearing singing right? Which is not what you're hearing because you have better ears than them. So you teach them how to hear and copy these embellishments that they love. And because that's what's going to help them develop their own style. So that 30 minute interaction between your student and you and Billie Eilish will change the way they listen to singers forever, forever right? It will have profound effects on this student as an artist and will be yet another way that you have impacted their lives. Yet another way that you've been fabulous for them. 
So there we go. I'm done. Have a great day. I'm Meredith Colby. <laughs> I support voice teachers to create confident teaching of, of popular styles. Sorry, I'm putting my trigger in here again. My book and other great stuff can be found at meredithcolby.com. I'm here every Monday at one o'clock Chicago time. Thank you for being here with me today. I appreciate it. I appreciate your time. I'm grateful for your attention. And if you want to sign up for my mail list and uh, get that free PDF download, loud, download, put teen in the comments. And Ilaria says, thank you. Thank you, Ilaria. Thank you for being here. I'm glad you all could be here with me today. Have a great week. Bye-bye.